Hello boys and girls, welcome to another session of L.A. Noir. Our next case is a marriage made in heaven. And this is actually the first time I'm playing this, so... Now you should see me... You should see my first take on this case. Ah. And of course he doesn't stop to help him. Oh yeah. All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit-and-run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. I don't care. I don't go All into right. any gangsters off scot-free. All right, let's go. I see let's go, bust Stefan. Here and find the goddamn evidence. I wonder whether I can review my notebook while Stefan is driving. It's him! A cop from the newspapers! Come on, Stefan, you're my driver. I'm not good at driving. You drive! I need to go over the case notes. <laughs> exactly! He, know, he knows exactly what I want. Um, Looks like the DA is gonna press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. Location? Oh, she's the DA. She suffered a race cafe. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let it go. He didn't run How do you do that? Wait. I'll give him something better. We don't know what how it was. And people hit and run with victim. We know nothing about the victim. Oh, he he's, he's a he's had a hat. So at least well, it was. Um, a man, but still, maybe we don't know. Race cafe. Oh, and let me let me see what what they chatted in the what they've chatted about in the car. Looks like the DA is going to press charges. I don't know what DA is, but Ana Ana Rodriguez is that is the girlfriend of that Gabriel. Ana Rodriguez might do time. Do time means that I know, as far as I know, to, to sit in prison or to be in prison. Might do time. Why would... It didn't look to me that she would be involved in the thefts and, and, and stuff. He was... Yeah, she suffered enough. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make... What is an easy make? And the DA likes convictions. Hmm. I'll convince him to let it go. How will you do that? I'll give him something better. Hmm. Now I want to see that. <laughs> it, it's nice that that they refer to or tell you something about uh, the case, the, the gone cases. Oh, okay, we have a, this this guy, that woman there smoking, probably saw Detectives, something. Detectives, over here. <laughs> Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Because a white male named Lester Patterson walked out of the bar and into the street, car hit over there, and he ended up here, dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, named Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now we're going to take a look around. Um... The only useful to contribute is a young lady over. She lives above the bar. Name of Shannon Perry. It's not a stage name. It's a bit of irony, isn't there? I don't know who Shannon Perry is. But it looks as if that is a an unusual name at that time. Why is that unusual? I don't know, from 
from today's point of view, hmm. well, at least it doesn't ring a bell to me. And it's 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Whatever that ri that is, the yellow brick road. What could that be? Right now, we're going to take a look around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's observe the victim. Phelps? Yes. Landed on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. Well, I think you can't really say that. Anything unusual here? No. What else is here? Pocket? Something in the eye. California Fire and Life. Lester Pattison. North Hope Street, January. Dear Mr. Peterson, it is with great pleasure that we acknowledge the receipt of your application. This is life insurance. That we acknowledge the receipt of your application. Pre-approval has been granted to raise the weekly premium on your life insurance policy from week to five ninety per week. This raise become effective January became effective January first. When our standard veteran care policy entitled you to a lump sum to a lump sum payout of ten thousand dollars in the event of your untimely death or permanent incapacitation. This new plan secures your beneficiaries a sum of sixteen thousand dollars. What the fuck? We at California Fire and Life thank you and wish you good health and security for the future. Yours sincerely, Curtis Benson, Vice President. So, Lester Pattison. Is it the victim's name? I have to look up. Look it up. And. So, I, I am not an expert on insurances, um, but uh, as I understand this letter, Lester Pattison will pay um, 370 to 590 per week to the insurance company, and in case he dies, he will get the sum of ten thousand dollars and his beneficiaries whoever that those people are I don't know who's a beneficiary in a case of death of somebody um, will get sixteen now probably uh, probably he'll get sixteen thousand or the beneficiaries, his beneficiaries will get 16,000 if Lester Pattison dies because it's a new insurance plan. Okay. I have to see whether the victim is actually Lester Pattison. People. Lester Pattison. Victim of hit and run incident. Alright, so this is Lester Pattison. What else does he have in his pockets? Yeah, Lester Pattison. Um. We can notify next of kin. Really? How so? Lester Pattison, male, brown, married. Yes. Okay, he's married. Mhm. Mm so we assume he has a wife. 
probably children. We know where he lives. Okay, so far so good. How much money is there? Two dollars? LP wallet with the LP initials. Anything else? Hand. Other hand. He's wearing no watches. Okay, I think that's it. So much of Lester Pettison. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. Mm -hmm. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest bone? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh look, that oh, was quite a drag here, from here to there. Body traveled a good twenty feet. Actually, from the blood stain, I can't imagine that up on the impact. Well, I can imagine that the impact would throw him away I twenty say, feet, but I can't imagine that he would instantly lose blood and it would be such a smear here it looks like he died here spilled a bit of blood and then he was dragged by somebody but I think this is no 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 I thought this this black, day, black thing is something um, but already in Skyrim I <laughs> I was suspicious whether the blood would really come out that quickly out of the wounds when you when you stab somebody. Okay, there's nothing special about this hat, is there? A usual hat. Filled hat, probably. And there is more. Ah, this was probably the this impact. blood is a long way from the body. Ah. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Yeah, this was probably the, the place of impact. He landed here. And maybe he was dragged over there. What is this? Okay, so... So the driver managed to break before the impact. Hmm. Yes. So it doesn't look like intentional. Doesn't look like it was intentional at the first glance at least. There, you with the trash in your hand, cooperate with Los Angeles clean city scene. Stow it, don't stow it, don't throw it. It's all yours, detective. Well, thank you. Let's talk. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Hmm. <laughs> Nice gesture there, nice greeting gesture from Bikowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Arguing? Okay, what did you hear? Then what happened? 
I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Um, can you tell us what kind of car that was? What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Mm -hmm. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. What were there? Three C eight. Were they three C eight? All right. Uh, you told us you've heard an argument. Um, do you know what the people were arguing about? Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. Mm -hmm. A man and a woman. That's all. Mm. Um, now, can you... I need some more details. What they were talking about. Why are you about. holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Why? Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. <laughs> People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate <laughs> things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. Mm-hmm. Certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. <laughs> Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. What? Who, who said it? Wait, I must see. I said it. Okay. I'll take the bartender. All right. I still can't <laughs> can't properly distinguish their voices, but they, they are clearly distinct. Just to me, it's all too new. Hello, Mr. Bartender. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, of Mrs. Patterson, home. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um wait. Better see the log. Um I run the place on the owner. Okay, we, we know that Dudley Lynch owes this place whether or not it's important. Maybe it was incidental that the victim has been here. Yeah, actually, I, w I want to ask whether the victim was a regular, regular visitor of this of this place. And he stepped out. Lorna, home. Um, he stepped out means probably. Oh, he has has to. He had to end his daily shift a bit earlier to take Mrs. Pattison home. Mrs. Pattison is clearly clearly not his wife. Mm, whoever it could be his daughter or um, lover or whatever. Okay, but somehow associated. What did you see? Did you see the hit and run incident? What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. All you heard? Didn't you hear the argument? Um, I think you're lying. Why are you lying, Lynch? What are you covering up? Is that the best you've got? You expecting me to confess to being the driver? No, there was a clear argument there and you must have heard it too. I'd suggest you speak to someone who saw what happened. I'm about done speaking to you. Mm. Okay, that wasn't the best. 
Um, did you know? Did you know the victim? Do you know the victim? Yeah, Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Okay, I believe that. Not one of your favorite customers. Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No, he came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. Wait, I must see the log. Um, Lester Pattison and Mrs. Pattison. Ah. So Mrs. Pattison was the victim's wife. And of course, Dudley Lynch. Ah, I should have. I should have checked the names before. Of course, um, this poor guy, um, Dudley Lynch. No, no way. Actually, he must have had the argument too. I I don't know what did I wrong with with telling him that's a lie. Hmm. I think I, I think I, I hope I clicked the right, uh, the, uh, the correct mouse button, and not 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 the other one because. Just back back out of an accusation with the other one, instead of selecting that, things to tell. Anyway. There was an argument. Overheard. Can you tell me about that one? Huh? A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Hmm. Yeah, that, that was it. What was it about? Who knows? The slightest thing could set those two off. Stalling just makes us more inquisitive, Lynch. We'll get to the bottom of this, with or without you. That guy has a serious attitude problem. You get um, anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. Mm -hmm. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. What is a love tap? Oh, let's see. It's, it's, it's this. It's this shrink again. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal 
is actually of benefit to society at large. <laughs> well, I think something bad will happen with this Dr. Harlan J. Fontaine. And we will investigate it sooner or later. He's become more and more suspicious with this, with this, with how he treats the patients. So tell, uh, let's see what we found out. Uh, log. Courtney Sheldon. Oh yes, that's that's this whole scene. They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds or every other day, and Lester was a fan of the love tap. Love tap is like an um, argument between husband and wife, I suppose. Um, so, I've done pretty pretty badly here with this guy. Mm. At least we can speak with his wife, Lester Pattison. What do we know about him? Nothing. Well, I have obviously no questions for him. Shannon Perry. I think, I think, yeah, this one. Lorna Pattison. We don't know how she looks like. Dudley Lynch. I've messed it up as badly as I could. We can still review evidence, right? The clues. What clues do we have? We know it was a red Lincoln Continental. The car which hit, which hit Lester. The insurance letter. Somebody will get sixteen thousand dollars for Lester's dead a death wallet. Nothing unusual there. From the wallet we we found we found Le Pedersen's residence. Yeah, we can we can set it as a destination already. Wait. Locations. Uh, that's all. What other clues do we have? Coroner's report. What's that? Oh yeah, that's the that's the doctor. The victim was intoxicated, which means probably he's he's drunk something, alcoholic. Chest wound probably caused by vehicle hood ornament. Yes. Argument overheard. Witness overhearing an argument prior to accident. Why didn't I take note that it was something very humiliating for a man? I think it was. People. Yeah, Dudley Lynch. What do we know about Dudley Lynch? Nothing. That's okay. Let's drive. No, oh, I'm, I'm pressing key E. Is this our car? Oh no, it's not our car. Where is our car? There it is. <laughs> Insta heat. Nice. You know the way. You can drive. That's right. I don't want to break anything while I'm driving. Patterson residence. Wow, we are way too early here. Can't possibly bother the wife or the widow at half past four in the morning, right? But I can have a look around, nevertheless. What's in the mailbox? I want to see what's in the mailbox is. It's full. Is there light in that room? Is she not sleeping?
What are these men doing? Half past four in the morning here. Can we talk? We can't talk. Probably shouldn't enter this at this time, right, Stefan? Any ideas? Let's speak to the wife and get this over with. Should we wake her up at half past five? Or, or? Oh no! Actually, she must have seen the accident. Ah, I stepped into something dirty. <laughs> she must have. She must have seen the accident, right? She. She was there. She was arguing with him. She's probably very desperate here. Uh, or very. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? Yes. We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? No, she's not really. Doesn't look like morning. We wanted to give you the facts about the accident, ma'am. I appreciate that, but I think I know most of them already, Detective. He was hit by a car, now he's dead. <laughs> what more is there to tell? Pardon me, but you don't appear to be too upset about it. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick together this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, and Beg I... Beg your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. <laughs> it's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. 